Hey everyone, I'm finally back, and in this video, we're going to look at the last of the expansion factions that I've yet to explain. This one is the Underground Duchy. The Underground Duchy is a faction of moles that apparently have been living under the woodlands for the entire time and have their whole own aristocratic society underground. And I just love the theme of that, that during this whole conflict that's been happening in the world of Root, there's always been an older, mysterious sort of civilization that has their own hierarchy and aristocracy that's finally engaging with the conflict on the surface world. So this faction came in the Underworld expansion and is the complement of the Corvid Conspiracy. And what people really like about this faction is, one, it's very fluid. You can play it in a lot of different ways. You can sort of build the faction as you kind of want. And two, that it has high reach. So this is the first high reach faction to come out since the base game. And this faction allows you to basically swap out either the Marquise de Cat or the Eerie and still have a fairly stable game with a lot of reach. And that's really nice. So uh, before we get started, let's do a little bit of a component overview for this faction, because there's a lot here. First off, we have 20 mole warriors. They are a little bit unique. They're also side-facing. You can see the profile of the mole's face, and you actually use negative space. So you've got the face of the mole with the closed eye and the little nostrils there. It's kind of cute. The color makes it a little bit hard to see on certain maps sometimes, but I think it looks good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, we have six different buildings. So there are three of each type. There are citadels and there are markets. I'll explain what they do, but they start the game here on your player board. So I've set them up there right off the bat. You have three tokens that are called tunnels. Okay. So of course they are moles, so they can go underground. That's part of their whole theme. And you have a whole bunch of additional little components. So you have these little wooden crowns that are painted gold. Uh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking we could probably put them on top of the meeples like this. That's not what they're for, but obviously feel free to do so if you want. But they are not really meant to be on the map per se. You also have this cardboard piece called the burrow. It's the same on both sides. And it's essentially an extra clearing. This represents the underground space that the duchy is able to inhabit. So that's really cool. It's a unique power that they have, that they have access to a 13th clearing. And you have these nine minister cards. We'll look at each of them in depth, of course, but each of them are different and they can be split up into three different ranks. You have these three squires, then you have three nobles, and then you have three lords, all of them completely unique. But they start the game sort of face down, face up if you want, on your player board, and you will turn after turn be swaying them over to your cause. Okay, let's jump right into the setup. As usual, we have the Marquise de Cat set up uh, before us. So we've got the keep over here, and then our three starting homelands for the cats. And now we're going to look at our advanced setup card to follow the instructions for their setup. So the first step is choose a homeland clearing that is not adjacent to enemy homelands. So this is very liberating for the underground duchy. You're allowed to start in a central clearing. It doesn't have to be on the map edge. And unlike some of the other high reach factions, you don't have to be two clearings away. You can be um, even just one clearing away like this. So if this is a cat homeland, I would not be allowed to set up here, but I could set up here or here or here. So why don't we just grab this spot right over here? So they're going to choose that central clearing and that's going to be the homeland. So it says put two warriors and one tunnel in the homeland. These are all the pieces that we get for our homeland. And I just like to visually use the tunnel to mark it off because we're also going to be putting a few more. Put five warriors among clearings adjacent to it as evenly as possible. So you're going to go ahead and grab five of your duchy warriors. 
and you're going to distribute them evenly around the homeland. So we have our homeland here. There are three clearings that are adjacent. One, two, and three. And we're going to distribute them evenly. Since we have more than three, each of them is absolutely going to get one. And now that leaves us with just two. And these two we can choose. Do you want to put one in here, one in here, one in here, one in here? All of those options are fine, but we cannot put the remaining two in a single clear. You can't bunch them up like that because it does say that it has to be even. So you can't have one have three and another adjacent clearing have one. So you have to split them up as evenly as you can. And then the last step is pretty easy. This is just where you fill in your player board where it says put your burrow near the map. It can be anywhere you want, but I like to have it just a little bit above my underground duchy player board. Fill the buildings tracks with your citadels and markets. So I've already done that. As you can see, the citadels are the ones that look like little castles, while the markets have a barrel on them representing commerce or goods or something of that nature. And then the last step, or the last two steps, put your nine minister cards face up on your unswayed minister's little section of your player board. So we're just going to put them like that. And then we put the nine crowns on the square spaces showing victory points. So I've already set them up. You take the crowns and you fill in these little square spaces on the board. As you can see, there are three sets of them. The first three have one victory point showing and underneath it's written squires representing the three squires in your minister deck. And then the next set of three all have two victory points written underneath. And then it says nobles and the last section marked lords. Each of them represents three victory points. So you can kind of think of the crowns as earning victory points, but I'll explain how that works once we get to the section of daylight that's described as sway. So we've set up the underground duchy, and now we're ready to take our first turn. So let's go ahead and follow the player board. So we started birdsong. There's really only a single step of birdsong, and it doesn't even require making any decisions. It's simply place one warrior plus one warrior per mole showing in the burrow. This is unique to the underground duchy. They recruit more depending on how many little meeple symbols exist. And this is completely dependent on how many citadels you have out on the map. So if you notice, there are uh, six little mole meeples that exist on your player board. And so the more you have of these revealed, the more you recruit every bird song. So of course we don't start with any buildings. We simply recruit one warrior and it goes right into the burrow. Okay. Let's talk about the burrow for one moment. The properties of the burrow are described right up here on your player board in this little berry section. It says the burrow is adjacent to each clearing with a tunnel token. You always rule it and only you can enter it. So the burrow basically becomes a 13th clearing of the map that is connected to the map by these tunnel tokens. So at the moment, this burrow and therefore the warrior inside of it can move to this clearing and this clearing only at the moment because there's a tunnel there. If I am able to place another tunnel somewhere else on the map, say here, I would be able to then move from the burrow to this clearing or from this clear or vice versa, back to the burrow and then back up to this clearing. Importantly, it does not make the two clearings with tunnel tokens adjacent to each other. That's a common misunderstanding. Just think of it as this burrow exists literally underneath your gaming table and the tunnel is a direct vein straight to the burrow, but not to each other. So you could make two moves like this. One, two. So you could get to another, you can get to any clearing with a tunnel between two tunnels in two moves, not one, okay? So the first action in our bird song is place one warrior into the burrow. And if I had any citadels built at this point, I would recruit more. But for now, we just get one. And that's it for bird song. It's very, very quick and simple. The real meat of the underground duchy's turn is all in daylight.
So the first step of daylight is called. It's actually called assembly, I think, in the law of root, but it doesn't have a name on the player board. And this is where you take two actions. You always get to take these two actions, but that might not sound like a lot. That action economy is going to grow exponentially throughout the game of root, and those actions can be move, battle, very standard, build. We'll explain how that works in a moment. Recruit and dig. Recruit and dig are a little bit、uh, interesting for the underground duchy, so let's talk about those. So a recruit action is very basic. It says place one warrior in the burrow. So when you take a recruit action, you get just one warrior, and you always recruit to the burrow. That's another property of it. So when you recruit, it always goes to the burrow, and then from there you're going to be able to deploy them out onto the map via the tunnels. The next action that's exclusive to the duchy is dig. So you look at your hand of cards. I've got a mouse ambush, a mouse root T, and the fox coins. The way it works is you spend a card to place a tunnel token. Well, I shouldn't have put that down. Place a tunnel in a matching clearing with no tunnel. So I would not be able to dig into this clearing. And just so you know, I cannot dig into the burrow itself. That's not allowed because the burrow does not have a suit. So you would spend a card. And if I want to dig into this fox clearing, I'd have to spend this fox card. I would be able to place a tunnel there, and in the same action. I could move up to four warriors from the burrow. Let's imagine we had four, up to four into that clearing. So it's sort of a placing of a tunnel as well as a move, but only up to four. If I've got six or more warriors or something in the burrow, two of them or more would have to be left behind because you can only move four in a given dig action. So that's one of your daylight actions if you wanted to do that. You can recruit. Of course, you can recruit multiple times. If I wanted to go one, two, that would be my whole daylight for turn one, and that's a very common approach, actually. Next action is battle. Same as any other faction, you just roll the dice. There's no weird rules of that for the underground duchy. Move is quite interesting because, like I said, you can always move from the burrow to any clearing with a tunnel, and Because you always rule the burrow, even if you have no warriors, you can always retreat warriors from a tunnel clearing back to the burrow, even if you don't rule that clearing on the map, because the burrow is always ruled. It's a very cool little property. And then the last action, or the first one on the player board, is build. And the duchy builds in a bit of a different way. So a lot of factions have spend a card to do stuff. But like the lizards, if you're familiar with the lizard cult, this is very similar. You reveal cards as the underground duchy in order to take certain actions, and then you regather them at the start of evening to then maybe craft some stuff, and that's very useful. So a lot of the cards can be multi-purpose for the underground duchy. So let's read what build says: reveal a card to place a building in a matching clearing you rule. Okay, so let's do that. Right now, I rule all three of these、um, clearings, but I cannot build here because, as you see, I don't have a matching card. This is a rabbit clearing. I don't have a rabbit card. So let's actually build something right here in this clearing. First thing is, I will reveal a matching card, which in this case is mouse, in order to build a clear、um, build a building. We're going to build a market. So put a market down there, and that's good. You leave the card. In your revealed cards area, you could keep it next to the clearing, which sometimes I like to do, or you can just have it above your player board. That's fine, but you won't be able to use this card until you reclaim it. So we've done one action exactly, which is build, and let's go ahead and do a move action, which is going to be one warrior from the burrow into the clearing with the tunnel, and that's it. Those are our two、uh, allotted daylight actions, and then we go on to the second step. We're gonna skip this for now because this step is you may take the actions of each swayed minister once, but I haven't swayed any of these ministers just yet. That will never be able to happen during turn one, so we're gonna skip that for now. Third is you're actually gonna sway a minister. So once per turn, one minister per turn. That's the maximum. You may reveal cards to sway a minister. You may only reveal. 
cards, matching clearings with any duchy pieces, one card per clearing. Whoa, 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 whoa. So what does all that mean? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to look at your hand of cards, not including anything you've already revealed, and you're going to see if you have any matching clearings that have a single duchy piece. Okay, it doesn't mean you have to rule the clearing. So for example, I do not rule this rabbit clearing, but if I had a rabbit card, I would be able to reveal a card that matches this clearing in order to try to sway a minister. So let's look at a description of some of them. Right now, I only have two cards in hand, meaning I'm only able to sway squires. If you look at all three of the squire cards, we have the formal, the marshal, and the captain. Each of them has a little symbol up in the corner that shows two cards. That means that you have to reveal two cards in order to sway them. The lords would require four cards, and the nobles would require you to reveal three cards. Of course, I don't have three cards or four cards in my hand, so we're not even going to look at these other ministers for the moment. We're just going to look at these squires. So I'm not going to pay attention to what they do just yet. I'm just going to show you the function of how to sway. So right now I look at my hand. I have one fox card and one mouse card. Do I have two different clearings? They always have to be different that match a fox and a ra la 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 mouse. Yes, I do. I have one mouse here and one fox uh, clearing right here. Perfect. So I'm going to reveal a mouse card. This one can stay here. It has, this was for a build. It has nothing to do with sway. So you can double up for that purpose. And I'm going to reveal this fox card that matches this clearing because both of them have duchy pieces. Brilliant. And remember, a piece is a warrior, a building, or a token. So even if I completely abandon the clearing and I only leave behind one tunnel, that's fine. I could still sway using that clearing because it's still a duchy piece. If there's a hireling that I control, that doesn't count as a duchy piece. You control it, but it's not a faction piece. If you're ever wondering what is a faction piece or a duchy piece in this case, you can find it on the back of the player board. Don't want to turn it over just now. So it's uh, for this purpose, it's your warriors, your buildings, and your tokens. Those are your faction pieces. So I've now revealed two cards that match clearings with duchy pieces, which means I'm eligible to sway a squire. So why don't we go ahead and sway the marshal, okay? So he is a squire, and his name is the marshal, and his action is described as take a move. That's awesome. That means that in that step that we talked about before, the second step of daylight, I would be able to take a move using this minister. Cool. So we're going to put it somewhere where it's very obvious that I have him. And then you're going to take a crown that uh, matches the rank you just swayed, which is squire. It could be the one on the left, the one on the right, or even the middle one. It does not matter. Let's just take the one on the left. You're going to put it on the minister card. I used to always put them up in the corner, but I now realize you could even put it right over the picture of the mole's head, which I think is cute. So we're going to do that. And that symbolizes that he has been swayed. And because you've revealed a victory point symbol, it's kind of hard to see in this very cluttered picture, but I assure you it says one victory point. So you get a victory point because you've swayed a squire. Anytime you sway a squire, you get one victory point. If you sway a noble, you get two victory points. You sway a lord, and of course, you get three. All right, so that concludes daylight. Then we move on to evening discard any revealed bird cards. I've only swayed non-bird, I've only revealed non-bird cards, so I discard nothing. That's great. And then return all other revealed cards to hand. So now is the step where I would get to pick up all of these different cards that I've revealed, be it for a sway or for a build or something like that. I think those are the only options, actually. <laughs> all right. So we've done that. We have no bird cards that we revealed, which we would be discarding. So be careful. The duchy don't love bird cards all that much because once you reveal them, that's the only use you'll get from them. The next step is craft. Yes, the underground duchy, just like the lizards, gets to craft in evening. 
and they are very, very good crafters when they want to be. So you craft using citadels and markets. So both of your different building types are crafting pieces. There is no difference. So I have a market in a mouse clearing, which means oh, I can craft a root tea. Heck yeah. But I think I'm not going to do that. And you'll understand why. So I'm going to hold off on crafting this root tea for now. And then we go to the last step of evening, which is draw one card plus one per reveal draw card symbol, same as most other factions. And then you discard down to five. So this is very familiar. So we draw one card. And then as you can see, because I have a market built, it's revealing a little draw card symbol. So I draw two cards. One, ah, oh, a bird card, not great. Two, and a fox card. Okay, so I've got some options here. And now I have a hand of five cards, which the duchy really like. This is kind of why I didn't want to craft this mouse root tea, because now I'll be able to potentially sway a lord or something very lucrative on the next turn. Okay. And as you can see, the more markets I have, the more cards I would get to draw in evening. And that concludes the first turn for the underground duchy. Let's fast forward to the second turn. So we arrive back at Birdsong, place one warrior plus one per uh, warrior showing for the citadels. I haven't revealed any, so I just recruit one. The underground duchy tends to be a very slow recruiting faction, so losing warriors is something you want to avoid. Okay. Then I have my two allotted daylight actions as part of assembly. So I could build, move, battle, recruit, and dig. I think I'm going to, hmm, let's look, see if there's something I want to craft. Maybe there is. Let's build a citadel in this clearing. Okay. So, oh no, I won't be able to. <gasps> because if I reveal this bird card, yes, a bird matches any clearing, but if I reveal in order to build this a building in a rabbit clearing, I won't be able to reclaim it because it's a bird card, so I would not be able to craft this. Ah, that's very irritating. So why don't we not build this turn? Instead, we'll simply recruit and dig. We tend to like using bird cards for dig actions because dig is a discard. So because you're discarding a card anyway, it might as well be a bird. So let's discard that bird card and we'll place a tunnel somewhere interesting. Ooh, we have two mouse cards, so why don't we plan to dig in a mouse clearing? Up here, and of course we can move up to four warriors. We have only two, so we move all of these up here, and there you have it. That is the end of our allotted daylight actions. The second step is you take the actions of each of your swayed ministers. Eventually, if you have six, seven, eight ministers that you've swayed, you could be able to take a big, big turn at this point. But right now we only have the marshal. So I'm going to take a move with the marshal and I'm going to move like this. One warrior, one over, okay? And that's it for the action. If you wanna track the actions you take with your ministers, <gasps> oh, this is my cat. Get over here. All right, a way that you could track the minister actions is maybe you have the crowns standing. This is one option. You can have the crowns standing up. And then once you've used them, you could knock them down like this. I, I do this for the officer actions of the Woodland Alliance as well. Or you could turn the card over, which I find a bit more fiddly. I like to just knock the crowns over to symbolize that that minister's action has been taken. Next, I arrive back at my Sway Minister step. So we look at the cards. I have four cards now. Let's look at the clearings that I have to choose from. I now have duchy pieces in two fox clearings, brilliant, and two mouse clearings. Ooh, that means that I could sway a lord this turn, and I think I will. So we place this mouse clearing right here, or a mouse card on the mouse clearing. One, two, three, four. Remember, I don't have to rule the clearing in order to reveal a card in order to sway. And now I'm going to sway the 
Duchess of Mud. So you see, I've revealed four cards which matches her little stat there, perfect. What does the Duchess of Mud do? Score two victory points if all tunnels are on the map. So we're very close to this threshold. I just need to dig one more time, place this tunnel somewhere on the map, and then during my next daylight, during the uh, minister actions phase, I'll be able to score two victory points just for having dug a few times. So that's great. We're gonna put the Duchess of Mud up here next to the marshal. And of course, we're going to take a Lord Crown and put it right on top of her head like that, revealing a three victory point slot. One, two, three. Great, we love swaying lords when we can because they're worth a lot of points and potentially more points later on. All right, that's the end of daylight. Next step, evening. Discard any revealed bird cards. I had a bird card, but I already discarded it for dig. So don't worry about that. Return all other revealed cards to hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, and now it's the crafting step. I think this is the turn I am actually going to craft that root tea, considering I will draw two cards anyway, and then I'll be back up to five. So we're going to craft the root tea using this mouse market. So we get to place that, put it in the crafting, uh, crafted items box, same as any other faction, and then advance two more points. So I scored five victory points this turn just by swaying a lord and then crafting an item. The duchy is very good at scoring big point bursts and they do require some early policing. Now I have these three cards still in my hand. I can't craft anything else. So that's it for my turn. I draw one card plus one because I still have that one market. One, two. Fantastic. And now I have a rabbit card, which means I'll have very flexible swaying action potential next turn. Now let's actually do a little bit of something with the Marquise de Cat. So let's say that the Marquise wants to be extremely aggressive. On their turn, what they're gonna do is they're gonna come over, do a big march action and just bring a whole bunch of warriors into this clearing. And then they're going to battle. So they battle the underground duchy. Of course, if you recall, I do have Ah, a mouse ambush card, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're not going to play it. So we roll, take out the duchy warriors, and then battle again. Zero, zero. Okay, well, in this instance, we probably would elect to lose the tunnel. However, I love stacking the dice. The cats are going to remove by destroying the tunnel, which would go back to the player board and this building. Losing buildings as the underground duchy is devastating. More so than for almost any other faction, save the lizards, because they have an ability called Price of Failure. Let's read what that does. Whenever any number of duchy buildings are removed, return your suede minister of highest rank, which in this case would be the Lord, the Duchess of Mud, Return her to the unswayed minister's pile. Remove its crown from the game, gone forever, and discard a random card. <gasps> Ooh, like we talked about, cards are everything for this faction, so losing one is really bad. And that's why the cats went in and just did some aggression right off the bat. So the way that this happens now for Price of Failure is you get to choose if you have multiple of the same rank that are the highest. So if I had two lords, I would get to choose. But because I only have one lord, the Duchess of Mud goes back to the unswayed minister's pile. This doesn't mean that she's gone forever, even though I lost her crown. The crowns are not connected to the individual lords. This just means I'm able to sway a lord three times. If I sway a lord again, I could choose the Duchess of Mud, but then I can only sway a lord one more time. So that would mean that there's one other lord that will be never able to be swayed because I've already lost one lord crown, okay? So that's the first thing is you lose a minister of highest rank of your choice, and then I have to ugh, shuffle around my hand and discard one card at random. Oh, it's the mouse ambush. If only I had played it. All right, now I start the next turn with just these four cards, wonderful. But that is how you handle 
a runaway leader in the underground duchy by taking out their buildings. All right, so those are most of the main mechanics of the underground duchy. One thing that I wanted to point out about Dig is that if you're in the event where you have all three of your tunnels out on the map, right? One tunnel here, one tunnel here, one tunnel here. You can still take a dig action the way you normally would, but there's a little parenthetical here that says move a tunnel if all on map, meaning I could still dig to go right here and I would just be able to move any of the tunnels that are already placed on the map and put them over here. Oh, there we go. And then take that move action to move up to four warriors from the burrow into that clearing. So yeah, you're, it's one of the few pieces that you are actually able to move at will like that, but it's still expensive to dig. So watch out for that. And then the last thing I'd like to do is go over all of our nine ministers to talk about what they can do and how strong they are. So let's start with the squires. So we've already seen the marshal, all right? The marshal is simply a move that you take. It's just an extra move action, very simple. Next up is the captain. The captain says, initiate a battle. Similar to the marshal, it's a simple action that you get to just take and you can incorporate that uh, into your string of actions. And what's really nice about the underground duchy is that once you have a whole stack of ministers that are swayed, you can take their actions in any order. So you could battle first, then take your move with the marshal or move with the marshal first, then battle. Very cool to have a whole bunch of different ministers. Uh, both of these can be a little bit situational. Uh, a move action is usually a little bit more useful than a free extra battle, especially considering some of the other ministers we'll talk about in a minute. The last one, which is my favorite, is the formal. The formal says, reveal a card to place a building in any clearing you rule. Right away, that might seem like it's exactly the same as a build action, but it's different in two ways. One is, it does not have to be a matching card. As long as you rule the clearing, you could reveal any card to take that build action. So I would have been able to uh, build in that rabbit clearing earlier by revealing a fox card. Only the four mole can do this. You can't do this from your normal daylight build action. So that's cool. The second thing is that it's not part of your allotted daylight actions, meaning that you could take a whole bunch of other minister actions. You can move with the marshal, you can uh, rearrange some stuff, and then use the formal so that you can actually save your build action until way later in daylight, rather than needing to do it at the beginning before you get to take any minister actions. So that's a nice big benefit for the formal, meaning you can spend more of your actions doing useful things like recruiting or digging stuff that those are two actions that you cannot replicate through any minister, right? So a lot of the time you're going to be using your free daylight actions to recruit or maybe take a dig, all right? So those are the three squires that require revealing two cards and grant one victory point when you sway them. The next three can be some of the most exciting. They are, uh, there they are. The Brigadier, largely uh, regarded as the most powerful, most useful, because the Brigadier allows you to take up to two moves, so one move or two moves, or initiate up to two battles. That's really cool, super flexible. Being able to just take two battles is very powerful. Um, you don't have to, you can take just one. But as long as you start taking a single type of action, let's say I take one battle, if the battle goes really well, I can't then say, okay, well, I'd also like to take a move with the Brigadier. No. Once you commit to taking battles, you stick with battles. Or if you take one move, you have the option to take the other move, or you could not. And remember that, um, that no interruptions rule, I'll put a link up here, that once you start taking an action, you can't then interrupt it to take a different action. So if you are taking one move with the Brigadier, you can't then do something else in between the two moves of the Brigadier. You have to complete the Minister's whole action. Okay, so that's the Brigadier. What could be cooler than that? Well, we've also got the Mayor. The Mayor is, uh, I think this is a pretty thematic choice. I like that they went with a uh, politician for this ability, which is take the action of any swayed noble 
or squire. The mayor just copies one action of any of the ministers I've talked about so far, because it can only be nobles or squires. You can't use the mayor to copy a lord action. And these guys are very powerful. We'll talk about them in a moment. So oftentimes what this will be used for is you take two actions with the brigadier, maybe two moves, then you can use the mayor to take two more moves, or you can do two battles. If you use the brigadier earlier for moves, you use the mayor, and it's a completely independent use of the brigadier's ability, which could be two battles, or four battles, or something. The mayor and brigadier combo is extremely powerful for that reason. And the last of the nobles is the banker. The banker says, spend any number of cards of the same suit to score equal victory points. So how does that work? Let's say that I have these three cards in my hand, and I've already done all my other daylight actions, and I say, okay, well, I don't really love these cards. I'm just going to spend them. So I have two mouse cards and one bird card. Um, you can use the bird, of course, to copy a mouse, because it's wild, and discard all three of these for three points. Yes, remember that, that birds can be wild. A lot of people have this question, does it have to be one single suit not including birds, including bir birds can be counted as any other suit for the purposes of banker. So that's really nice. It can be a really nice end game purge of hands just to score the last few points to win. And a lot of the time you'll see people actually, if they lose a building, they'll actually elect to lose the brigadier instead of the banker so that they can use the banker to drop two or three cards from their hand and then mayor copy the banker's action to discard the rest of their hand to maybe score five points from their whole hand. Very nice little combo there. And the last three ministers are the lords, right? Um, the nobles require revealing three cards. The nobles are the big kahunas that have to have four revealed cards in order to sway them. We've already looked at the Duchess of Mud, which is you get two victory points if all three of your tunnels are out on the map, all right? If you have two tunnels out on the map and one still in your supply, you get nothing. So Duchess of Mud is pretty cool. Um, I really like her. Next one is the Earl of Stone. This is you use his action in the minister action, of course to score one victory point per citadel on the map. So remember, the citadels are the buildings that get you more warrior recruitment, okay? You can have up to three out on the map, and if you have all three, incidentally, you would be recruiting six warriors because you always get one plus one, two, three, four, five, so one plus five is six. So if I have two citadels out on the map, I could use the Earl of Stone's action. I can just tap his crown in order to get two victory points. So this one's a bit different from how the Duchess of Mud works, which is you must have all the tunnels to get the value for Duchess of Mud. But even just a single citadel would get you one victory point for the Earl of Stone. If you have all three, then you get three points. Very cool. And the Baron of Dirt is pretty similar. It's score one victory point per market on the map. Exactly the same as the Earl of Stone, but now it works for the market. So if you have a whole bunch of card draw and the duchy can have up to four card draw, which is nuts, you could get three victory points potentially for having all three markets. Um, yeah, if you have one or two lords swayed, you can get potentially big, big point bursts towards the end of the game as the underground duchy. So if you're playing an experienced duchy player, you have to knock them out really early, especially if they get any buildings going, because this amplifies their snowball potential really well. Now let's talk about how a few of the crafted improvement cards interact with the underground duchy's unique properties. So the first one is tunnels. This one's pretty cool. It has the underground duchy character represented here on the card, and you'd think that it'd be some amazing interaction, or it would be redundant, but really it's very different because the tunnels ability, um, weirdly named because you also have tunnels as a component? I don't know. I think that they could have named this card something else, but it basically allows you to treat any clearing with your crafting pieces as adjacent. So unlike how the tunnels work, which is 
tunnels are connected to the borough, and then the boroughs are connected to the other tunnels. This means that any of your buildings, your crafting pieces, are connected. And this actually might end up helping you out a little bit more if, let's say, you have a clearing with a building and a tunnel, which typically happens a lot for the underground duchy, you'll be able to, say, move between another clearing with a tunnel, but not because of the tunnels, but because of the buildings. The buildings are now considered adjacent to each other, so it replicates the feel of an interconnected board for the duchy without actually using the exact same components. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, next up is the partisan cards. So if you know how partisan cards work, in a battle, in a matching clearing, let's say that you had mouse partisans, you'd be able to discard all non-mouse cards from your hand in order to deal an extra hit. Now, any card that you've revealed is technically not in your hand. So what you could do is if you have revealed a card, let's say that you've built this turn or something, then you conduct a battle using a minister action maybe, then you'd be able to say, okay, well, I'm discarding all non-mouse cards, but this fox card I revealed earlier, this is not part of my hand, so I can leave that there and then still reclaim it at the end of my turn. This is pretty cool because of the order of your operations. Um, the duchy can do battles after a build action to reveal cards and build and then battle later. Or even better, if you have League of Adventurous Mice, which allows you to exhaust an item in the crafted items box, to take an action, you can use this League of Adventurous Mice action any time in daylight, meaning you can do it after the Sway Minister's step, which is the last step in your uh, daylight, before you reclaim an evening. So you can take all your actions, reveal three, four cards to Sway a Minister, then take an action with League of Adventurous Mice that maybe would force you to discard all your cards, but since your hand is now empty for the moment, you wouldn't lose anything for a partisan usage. Or if you were to go on to a sympathy token or battle a sympathy token, and now you're causing outrage, but your hand is completely safe because they're in the revealed card section. So nice little interaction here for the underground duchy. The last one is false orders. If somebody uses false orders on you, they can force you to take any valid action. That action could involve the burrow, of course, right? So they could force you to move your warriors back into the burrow or vice versa. They can force them to move out of the burrow into a clearing with a tunnel. So pretty simple. And the last one is a blast from the past comes from the base deck. So Royal Claim says in Birdsong, may discard this card to score one point per clearing you rule. The burrow is defined as a clearing, meaning you could score, in theory, up to 13 points if you rule every single clearing and the burrow. And remember, the burrow is always ruled by the underground duchy. So even if you have no warriors here, you can still use royal claim to score some points for every clearing you rule, including the burrow. So nice little interaction here. I don't necessarily recommend having four buildings out on the map because... That might be uh, a lot more heat than you're willing to <laughs> attract, but it's a little interaction that is possible. And that's it for the Underground Duchy. I'm really happy to be in the new location making videos again, and I hope that you guys are still interested, and I'm going to try and put out some different types of content very soon, so look forward to that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time.